Okay, nice uh, sunny August day. This is our sink outside in the cook shack. Do a lot of food prep for parties here. Uh, if you look up, you can see the old weathered truss line. And the drip edge came down, pretty much landed on your back when you were doing dishes. Now that could be dew or anything. So, hey, let's make this two feet longer. And I'm going to show you how that's easiest because you don't want to take these trusses down off the building to be able to extend it. There's some work involved in taking trusses down. So we're going to do it in situ. You see the other side is finished. Metal's on it. Kind of worried about getting metal on today so we protect, protect the stuff from a possible rain that might happen. But anyway, here's what's been done this morning already. You can see, and now I'm going to show you how to do it. I've uh, made up this press that allows me to do this, again, in situ, in place, so we don't have to fool around tearing trusses down. Talk to you in a bit. So one of the things about this uh, video project is that I don't have a videographer. I've thought of a few different people, but I don't want to bother them on a Sunday. So we just got done with this last truss connecting it and this is going to be a piecemeal you can see there's a very well that rust mark at the seam I'm going to move on to the next one I'll give you a few either snapshots or video clips here we are again lined up this is on the next truss obviously the extension isn't there yet we start out by placing our fixture on the truss gripping it and screwing it in this is not the way I'd plan things going. Keeps things lined up. You'll see how important that is. Basically, we got a straight line off the original truss. When this extension goes in here, we wanted to make sure it was tight up in here. I'd like it tighter. Tail end of the fixture keeps everything in line, and there's going to be some considerable weight here. So we allow it long enough to fall on the next truss. Keeps things straight. Again, uh, couldn't do it, couldn't show you the video, but obviously there's the uh, screw. Held it nice and tight. I got a pretty straight line. Our joint is fairly close. I'm going to see up the line. Everything's lined up weight bearing on the back side you'll see why in a second obviously there's going to be a little bit of editing in this here's the guts of the mechanism that's going to allow this to happen there's some substantial steel here a lot of little tweaks that make everything work this is the table that's going to hold one of the gang nails truss plates whatever you want to call it I'll line this up I'm holding it on an angle because there's a rare earth magnet that's going to hold pieces in place. And once it's there, you can do little adjustments. But it, these rare earth magnets and these plates, these bad boys being sharp, you might be wanting to wear gloves. They warn you. It'll really grab you. I've seen a lot of people do these videos by themselves online. I feel for them. Oh, so you see how it grabs it. Here's the counter, the other plate on the other side. We're gonna come in on that angle, cover the magnet, let it go. Now she's in place. I gotta watch what I'm doing, not what the camera sees, so I apologize for the video. I'm gonna line this up. Yeah, that's pretty good. This floats so it can come into place. Obviously. <sighs> That's where you want to see it. Next. Oh man, the sun. We're not quite lined up. The top is because of the way it's screwed in. But the bottom floats around a little bit. Don't worry about it. The one thing I do want to make sure is that no matter, you can see, I, I can get a gap here, depending on how things are being pulled. So I take a little counterweight, just took a bar clamp, Put it out on the end, 
It serves no purpose other than to make sure that the joint is tight here with a little bit of weight on the back side. Ladders in place, alignment fixtures ready, extension, wooden extension for the trusses being held in place. Little advice, this piece is heavy. I'm going to climb above so I'm not lifting over my head or even at head level, chest level. I'm going to climb up above so that when I drop this next piece into its place, you're not straining yourself. You guys with bad shoulders will know what I'm talking about. Okay, now you can see that this piece is held center because of the way the fixture extension is configured. And then, obviously I'm not down yet, I'm going to let it drop into place, away from the wood, and then we just slide it in. We've got another piece that is going to, about to be pushed in, but we can nudge it up against the truss extension. Everything's lined up, just waiting to be pushed. Okay, as you can imagine, this 20 ton bottle jack took a little bit to get into place. You hold it with your left hand, snug it up with the, you know, by screwing out the jack foot. It's up against our piece. Both sections, I hope I'm getting that, are waiting for the pressure. They're just barely hanging on. That's why the jack is staying in place. There could be some measure of safety straps and such, but this is 315 country. We don't look for all that safety stuff. Um, the jack says it works horizontally, only in this position. So you see it's not easy. My pressure release valve is stuck up in here. I had to use a wrench, not the traditional uh, jack fixture to screw and unscrew it. But if you were to turn this jack over so that it was accessible, this jack does not pump. Actually bought two jacks to find that out. Both of them probably would have worked. I worked on this one enough, having spent $40 twice. And now we're where we want to be with it. So, I'm going to start this process. Get a little more pressure, and then we can go hog wild. The teeth are biting in. You may be able to hear it. On the back side, same thing happening. I used a little bit of an extension on the handle. Twenty tons. If I was using two hands, she wouldn't be hearing so much grunting. So she's pretty much set. You'll see in a second what the results were. Two more good squeezes. The handle's out. Grab my little wrench. I think I can do this without too much. Put the wrench in there. Just give it a single quarter turn, eighth of a turn. And then there's enough pressure off the jack. A little tug, she comes out. Again, high on the ladder. Got her handle, give it a little tug because the rear earth magnet kind of, oh, hang on. She's off. There's the upper look of what's been going on. Taking this piece back off, reversing the drill. Duh. Little uh, free tip is when you take the uh, jack down the first order of business is to collapse it and reset the control screw so that you're ready to jack because you don't want to be halfway up the ladder with that thing realizing you haven't collapsed it or that you have to set the close the valve off to get ready to pump so again the rear earth magnets grabbing a little bit snatch it off of there put it over on the next truss we don't have our end piece to hold, so we got to reverse positions. We're at the end of the line. Take care of that in a second. So, that is one completed truss extension. You can see a little bit of a groove here where the plate literally pressed into the wood, the pusher plate, not the nail plate. 
but they are buried. 20 tons of pressure. No hammering, no smash in the wood, seesawing back and forth with the nail plate. Both sides set home. Nice and straight, look up the line there. A little bit of deviation or width from new to old. That happens, in fact, sometimes the new is narrower, sometimes it's wider, you know how lumber is. But that's the show, thank you.